176,000 nautical miles from Earth. They were traveling at a speed of 3,200 feet per second to the moon. To put that speed into perspective, your travel time from the Los Angeles airport, which is approximately 32 miles away, would be 53 seconds. And less than 48 hours from right now, we will celebrate the 50th anniversary of the day three courageous men embarked on a journey from the Earth to a truly uncharted place, carrying with them the hopes and determination of thousands of women and men who conceived, designed, engineered, built, and supported the endeavor. And buoyed by the goodwill and the imagination of people around the world, they landed safely on the moon. Exactly sure what that means. <laughs> I hope it's a good thing. 
NASA researchers benefited from conducting tests on both me and my identical twin brother, Mark, also a former NASA astronaut who remained right here on Earth. And the results were reassuring. While in space, the human body adapted to the extreme environment of space. But make no mistake, there is still much more to learn. ...and purposefully expanding beyond what we know how to do. Similar out-of-the-box thinking that 50 years ago made the Apollo 11 mission a success, is now being applied to map the boundaries of human interstellar flight within the next 100 years. And once again, all along the way, these scientific discoveries and technological advances will enhance life on Earth. As the principal of 100-year Starship Initiative, our main objective is to be sure that the yet undiscovered capabilities for human interstellar flight, that is going beyond our solar system to another star, that those capabilities exist within the next 100 years. The truth is, we believe pursuing an extraordinary tomorrow creates a better world today. But many of those that push these boundaries, <laughs> Corvettes and astronauts have long been linked. Pilots like high performance, precise, and safe modes of transportation. And of course, they've got to be fast. And like a rocket, the Corvette you're about to see has the engine in the back. <laughs> Many people here and uh, watching around the world, I'm a huge fan, having owned two different generations of the Corvette myself. And tonight we're here to celebrate an important milestone in U.S. and automotive history. Here to tell you more is someone who knows a thing or two about Corvettes. Please welcome GM Executive Vice President and President of the Americas, Barry Engel. Custom finished in a special black accented 
Riverside Gold color scheme that was designed by Bean himself. Corvette gained huge exposure when it famously appeared in the June 1971 issue of Life magazine. Apollo 15 Lunar Mission crew members Jim Irwin, Al Gordon, and Dave Scott have been photographed with their Corvettes in a training version of the first lunar rover vehicle, or moon buggy, which they would deliver to the moon. The Apollo 15 crew members, their Corvettes were each a different color, red, white, and blue. Dual racing stripes on each car completed the colors of the American flag. Almost everyone has a story of the first time they saw a Corvette. I remember like it was yesterday. I was a little kid and the neighbor across the street had a son who would occasionally come to visit. And the son, he rolled in style. He drove an early C3. It must have been about a 68 or a 69. It was one like the Apollo Pioneers drove. My dad, he always liked cars and the Corvette caught his attention. But I didn't need Dad to tell me it was cool. Even as a young kid, I could tell that Stingray with rally wheels and a rumbling V8 was really something special. Corvette is truly an American icon. No other sports car nameplate has been roaming the streets or dominating the tracks as long as Corvette. After 66 years and seven generations, Chevrolet's Corvette has garnered a passionate global family, and many of them are here tonight or watching around the world. From all of us at Chevrolet, thank you for joining us for this milestone event. Now, I could literally spend the entire show listing the thousands of Corvettes that you but first, there isn't enough time, and second, I'm sure I've missed something that would cause a, a fantastic and passionate debate. It is this passion for Corvette that unites our fans and our customers. The same passion drives our designers, our engineers, our suppliers, and of course, the entire manufacturing team here in the U.S., specifically in Bowling Green, Kentucky, where we proudly build this great car. And that passion started on day one. January 17, 1953, Chevrolet revealed the Corvette Dream Car at New York's Waldorf Astoria Hotel as part of GM's traveling auto show known as Autorama, Motorama. Not even the founding fathers of Corvette, designer of Harley Earl, architect of the V8 engine, and Cole, or the young Belgian-born engineer, Zora Arcus Duncan, none of them could have imagined the automotive legend they were launching. With more than 1.7 million produced, the Corvette has long been the crown jewel of Chevrolet. It has always represented Chevrolet's best in design, performance, and technology, all at a great value. Like their kindred spirits who made aviation and space exploration possible, our designers and engineers have been similarly inspired by every generation of Corvette to push the technical limits of propulsion, materials, precision engineering, design, and aerodynamics. We have not only pushed the envelope on our production cars, but we have been working behind the scenes for decades to design and engineer mid-engine research vehicles that pushed even further, all in preparation for this moment. Earlier, Scott and May outlined the importance of creatively blending engineering and design to make great things happen and the importance of focusing on every detail. The next generation Corvette is not just about imaginative breakthrough engineering or breathtaking design. It's about both. And it's about every detail reimagined. What you're about to see is a milestone achievement 
for GM, for Chevrolet, and for Corvette. This car is a powerful testament to the creativity, imagination, discipline, and perseverance of the men and women who had the courage to dream and journey to places where few, if any, have ever gone before. Ladies and gentlemen, the all-new 2020 Mid-Engine Corvette. Zora for the first time all traced 
back to growing up in this great business. On many weekend afternoons, my dad took me to work with him at the GM Tech Center in Warren, Michigan, specifically the Chevrolet Engineering Building, where the Corvette gave a life. I spent many of those rides to Warren hunts in the rear flat area of Corvette Coops. On the way home, it would take me by the GM Research Building lobby to see the Firebirds in the original Silver Stinger. I just loved everything about it. And they used to have a swap meet in Warren down the road from the GM Tech Center where they'd sell Chevrolet heads and parts and all kinds of stuff. On one of those weekend trips to work when I was about 10, I begged my dad to stop at the swap meet so we could check it out, and he did. We go inside the huge warehouse-like building to look around, and there's Dora. I'd never seen him before, but you could tell right away that he was someone special. He was sitting there holding court, signing all kinds of things for all kinds of people, and it was just so cool, such a great moment. It all contributed to the aura of Corvette for me, and reinforced what I already knew I wanted to do with my life. That's why it's so special and so exciting for me to be up here on this stage with this car. This car, the all new 2020 Corvette, is one that changes everything. With every succeeding generation since 1953, Chevrolet has worked hard to make Corvette better and better. We've never stopped improving, never stopped innovating, and never stop making the car faster, better handling, more comfortable, more everything. You can make the case that once we got to C7, we had pushed the limits of what we could do in that configuration. It was as close to perfection as front engine rear drive Corvette was going to get. To take performance and driving dynamics to the next level for our customers, we had to move to mid-engine. And that's what Zara had always wanted. Force. In 1959, exactly 60 years ago, Zora and his team went to work on developing Chevrolet Engineering Research Vehicle Number 1, commonly known as SERV-1. SERV-1, which made its debut in 1960, was a demonstration of what happens when you push the boundaries of engineering and design to develop a mid-engine race car. What made SERV-1 so unique was how light and powerful it really was. The car only weighed 1,600 pounds, and the body accounted for 80 pounds of that. The 283 cubic inch V8 powered the Serv 1, produced 350 horsepower, and weighed only 350 pounds, thanks to the then novel use of aluminum in the cylinder block and heads, and several other critical parts like the water pump and the flywheel. Zora's team also used magnesium in the clutch housing and fuel injection manifold and it also featured mechanical fuel injection. But my favorite aspect of Serv 1, and it's probably yours too, if you've ever seen it run, you can actually see flames coming out of the back of it and it's just <laughs> unreal. So Serv 1 was followed by what I think is most, the most beautiful of all the Serv vehicles, Serv 2, in 1964. The Serv 2 was an amazing car built to compete against the four GTs of Le Mans. It had a monocup chassis, a 377 cubic inch V8 producing 500 horsepower. Importantly, CERV 2 was, in fact, all-wheel drive. The transmission featured a unique configuration in which the rear wheels were driven by one torque converter and the front wheels through another in the front. So our patented this configuration in 1968. CERV 2 also marked the beginning of the velocity stacks, like the McLaren's had which were developed, in fact, by General Motors R&D, and that car is very, very special in my opinion. And in 1990, the Serv 3 made its debut. I was already working at the company, so I remember it being built around the time we were spending a lot of time at the GM proving ground, working on sort of the holy grail of a true active uh, suspension system. Serv 3 did have that yaw control and kept it stable through the active suspension, and it had active aero and other advanced technology on it. Like its predecessor, it had an all-wheel drive mid-engine configuration. And it was powered by a turbocharged ZR1 5.7 V8, producing 650 horsepower. And it weighed only 3,400 pounds thanks to extensive use of carbon fiber, and the central structure was in fact a carbon fiber torque tube that weighed only 38 pounds. 
the ends of that beam were machined from titanium. Those three SIR vehicles and their legacy are very much the inspiration for this new first ever mid-engine 2020 Corvette Stingray. They show what Corvette has always been about for Chevrolet and GM, pushing the boundaries of innovation in terms of propulsion, material usage, and performance. Now, just as Corvette has been a halo for Chevrolet and the brand, these SIRF cars were a halo for GM R&D, pushing the company to greater innovation and to new heights. They also serve to show that mid-engine has always been a part of Corvette's destiny, and it's something we've been looking at for a very, very long time. All along, it has been absolutely paramount that we keep Corvette true to its roots of attainable performance. That engine has historically posed a challenge to this mission. Not so anymore. The time has come today, and we feel that both Corvette traditionalists and potential new customers will embrace the change in layout, especially once they see it and drive it. They'll think it's flat out the best Corvette they've ever driven, and that will be because it's the best Corvette anybody's driven. There are many reasons for that, even beyond the mid-engine layout, like the way it feels, the way it sounds, the way it looks, and the incredible attention to every detail on the car. And that's what we're going to dive into now with Phil and then Tad. So please join me in welcoming the Executive Design Director of Global Chevrolet, Mr. Phil Zad. current seventh generation Corvette and each one before it had a strong and powerful presence. But the new mid-engine eclipses anything we've ever done before. This is not merely a new chapter in the Corvette legacy, this is an all new book. But before I continue, I want to acknowledge the true design talent that really brought this mid-engine Corvette to life, as well as generations prior. John Tafaro, former Chevrolet Executive Desi uh, Director of Design, Johnny in the audience. And also Tom Peters, former Corvette chief designer. Tom, please stand. Now both John and Tom have recently retired from GM, but they're here with us tonight to share this moment. Uh, their legacy and talent will forever live on with Chevrolet and into the future with this new stunning 2020 Stingray. Uh, I hope you'd all agree with us. Sure. <laughs> now Chevrolet has always been a symphony of performance, design, and engineering. But on this car, every element has been elevated to the next level of craftsmanship. The Stingray's exterior is a powerful, bold, futuristic design statement with exotic proportions, a wider stance, but still unmistakably Corvette. You can see the continued influence of aircraft design, lean and muscular with sculpted shapes, conveying a sense of motion even while standing still. With the new cab forward driving position and rear engine location, the proportions have become the essence of a jet fighter for the road. some of the essential Corvette design cues that are timeless and transition well into this new mid-engine configuration. For example, the bold front face with LED lights and aggressive dual element DRL signature proudly say Corvette. The strong fender piece over the front wheel and rear quarter give the Corvette the expected athletic muscular appearance. The sleek sculptor is low, taut, and narrow driven. And the horizontal crease on the body side is the main design element that gives Corvette its sleek appearance and anchors the fender shapes and aggressive side intake. The purity of this feature is so significant that we hit the door handle releases underneath the side intake to keep them clean and uninterrupted look. 
Now as you move to the rear of the car, the dual element tail lamps are uniquely Corvette with an enhanced three-dimensional execution. With the wide lamp location and the lower dual exhaust tips, the rear stamp exudes the performance attributes of a true exotic. Now the design challenges for this mid-engine Corvette were unique in that everything had to be changed. But at the same time, our mission was to make the finished product not just unmistakably Corvette, but an exotic supercar version of a Corvette. By repositioning the engine to the middle, the proportions shift and the whole canopy is thrust forward in profile, allowing the rear wheels to move farther back for a much more aggressive attitude. The mid-engine design allows for a more forward feel in terms of driving position and visibility. You're actually leading the way as you drive. Additionally, having the motor behind you communicates the supercar feel, which intensifies the overall driving experience. The new location of the engine is truly the focal point for the car's design. It's the heart of this new Corvette, and it sits like a jewel in a showcase. A jewel in a showcase that is visible through the large hatch rear window. Now, every visual surface on this component um, received unprecedented attention including the meticulously designed engine and underhood compartment. Diving into the detailed execution of the car, the design team found inspiration in high-end motorcycles and race car components. We sought to optimize the appearance of every wire, tube, component routing, fastener, and finish. We took the panels off and spent countless hours developing the engine compartment, right down to all the mechanical fasteners. The intake manifold covers were completely redesigned and a Corvette emblem was added for additional detail. Now the exterior statement is bold, fresh, and fully capable, reflecting what we've learned from past Corvettes and from racing. For the new Stingray, we completely redesigned its cooling and airflow. We looked at drag, lift, how to achieve the ultimate balance with this new mid-engine configuration while maintaining the design integrity. All the surfaces are pulled taut as possible over the mechanicals, giving the car a dynamic energy that visually draws people to it. Now what you see on stage is the Z51 package. We've had this unique track package for Stinger in the past, and this one offers customers even more. As you can see, it has an, ex an uh, aggressive front splitter and an open air rear spoiler. Our designers work hand in hand with the air engineers to give a whole new meaning to the term form follows function. Now Tad will touch on this a little bit more uh, in his presentation. Uh, now the mid-engine configuration not only enables a stunning exterior, but also improves interior accommodations. With the engine behind the driver, the cowl and the instrument panel are lower. The entire occupant package is moved forward 16 and a half inches, improving visibility. The driver compartment is also larger than the previous generation offering more space and an inch more sea travel. With this new mid-engine exotic exterior, we had to deliver an inspiring interior to match. The which is that the unobstructed view of the 12-inch reconfigurable cluster display. The square steering wheel shaped and low G spoke configuration enables a full during Thank you. 